for something in life, otherwise you will fall for anything. My name is Tamara Nambiar and I will be your MC for today. I would like to begin by thanking you all for coming here. My mom agrees too. I'm sure you're all familiar with her, but if you're not, I can introduce her to you through a short five-line poem that I wrote, but it's a brief introduction, just letting you know. Here it is. She's a mother, a wife, and a daughter. She's a fighter who fights for what is right. She is very bright. She's an artist on the inside and a gallerist on the outside. Introducing my mother, Lakshmi Nambia. Tonight, and that was her, and you know, it's a surprise. So, thank you, Tamara, for that uh, introduction. <laughs> um, firstly, thank you all so much for coming here. I can't tell you how excited I am uh, to be here. Uh, in standing in front of you. Firstly, I get to share it with all my friends here, which is, you know, which is exciting. Secondly, um, you know, we, Srishti is turning 19 years today. So, um, thank you. And I want to take a moment to remember my mother, uh, the founder of Srishti, who founded Srishti in uh, 2002, to provide a creative space uh, for uh, artists, uh, established and upcoming artists to showcase uh, artworks in the contemporary field. Uh, and thirdly, I'm excited to showcase License to Love, um, especially after one whole year where uh, we could not showcase, we could not do any physical exhibitions. Uh, but last year was, uh, was um, a year where Srishti was busy, even though our gallery was not uh, open physically. Uh, we uh, we did an art fundraiser sale where we were able to support underprivileged artists and artisans. Um, you know, when we when the pandemic was on, we only saw the plight of uh, daily wage earners and um, and migrant workers. But even the artist community was suffering, and uh, we um, through the art fundraiser we were able to support 72 artists with 25,000 rupees. And each, yes, <laughs> each artist with 25,000 rupees. And, uh, and uh, I want to thank um, a lot of you here who have supported us in that fundraiser. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you. So a big thank you. Um, with, um, and coming back to License to Laugh, um, this show is, um, you know, one especially, you know, given the times of disorientation and, uh, you know, this is an, uh, a show which attempts uh, to showcase art that navigates the space of humor and satire, both visually and conceptually. And I am saying visually and conceptually because there are a lot of artworks which is using satire more conceptually. Uh, this was a concept that I had in my mind for the last three years. But I was able to bring it to life because of Lena Vincent, who is the curator of the show. And with that, Lena, I request you to come on stage. So I want to take a few minutes uh, to talk a little bit about the show and some of the artists that are there. So Lena, do you have any broad statements on the show that you'd like to share? Yeah, first of all, it's so wonderful to be here. Thank you, Lakshmi, for inviting me again. And uh, uh, we, this has been a really collaborative experience, I should say. We are co-curators rather than me coming in as a curator because the conversation has been continuous. Um, I'd like to say that, you know, we realized even during this process that there are many types of humor and satire. Uh, what makes me laugh may not make you laugh and uh, what someone thinks is satirical may make someone else angry. So, you know, we've, we've also had to negotiate certain spaces within this area of humor, which has been so fascinating. And I think when you look at the works and, uh, you know, enter into these imaginative spaces that the artists have brought together, you'll realize that that's what it is. So, it's been really wonderful to put this show together. Thanks, Lena. Uh, and we have seven artists in the show and we do want to talk a little bit about each of the artists. We won't take but uh, one of my favorite artists and it was on the top of my list when I thought about the show was Chitra Ganesh. Chitra Ganesh is an artist who grew up in the US. Um, she is a top contemporary artist of the country today and um, you know I just loved her works and I would love for you to just talk a little bit about Chitra's work. Yeah that's like 
the most exciting thing. Um, uh, we have, we do have lots of wonderful work in the show, but I think Chitra Ganesh is someone who, as as women, I think that we look up to a lot. Uh, she has been able to use this wonderful visual vocabulary that is inspired right from uh, you know traditional forms of iconography as well as popular culture like Bollywood posters as well as comic art and things like that. So she is a person who has been really sort of imagining the overturning of, of uh, of these sort of archetypes that we have and uh, she is she is looking for a utopian feminine world and looking at that in a in a very uh, humorous perspective sometimes a very satirical and absurd perspective sometimes but i think it connects with all of us deeply when we see that sort of overturning of what we see as a conventional society particularly here in india and Chitra Ganesh's works are the large works as soon as you enter that you see. And talking about that shift in power, we have two other artists who are also talking about uh, that shift in power towards women. Uh, I have Princess P. Princess P is the, you know, as soon as you en enter, you see one sculpture, which is a dadi. She calls it the dadi. Um, and she talks about how in farm uh, protests, we see a reversal of role where men are actually cooking and these women are leading the stage and especially uh, the dadis. So do check her out. It's uh, absolutely too cute, you know, those, those cultures and her work were, you know, talking about this. And the other one that you would have seen is um, uh, Smriti. She uh, again reimagines the goddesses, uh, you know, Usha, Umma, Kali, and uh, she says that, you know, and contextualizes it to the contemporary times to relate it to you and me. So do look at it, do read about it. It's uh, it's really beautiful and it's inspiring. Uh, you know, one of one of the common sort of uh, imaginations that we have is a sort of return to childhood when we are thinking about. Uh, playfulness and laughter and uh, you know a sort of simplification of, of our complex lives. So Tushar Vagela has in fact created some really powerful pieces with very short statements like don't grow up. It's actually you know a really large critique on adult adulting and adulthood and you know a sort of reminiscence of what childhood can actually bring and um, uh, Tukral and Tagra have really uh, uh, done some incredible work in uh, in sort of uh, contextualizing really complex experiences of life, but through the idea of gameplay. So we have, in fact, two pieces of work here, which are both games, and uh, one makes you take a breath, say these short uh, tongue twisters and play a game that really makes you, uh, you know, provokes thought in you. And the other one is, of course, the uh, uh, wonderful game that we have. Of, which yes, the walk of life. So I was really excited and I know I've told some of my friends about this game. Um, so he, it's called walk of life and uh, he, he's made 10 editions of this game. And it is the Das Avataras of, uh, of Vishnu and how it starts uh, from, you know, how you start life and, and the evolution of mankind from a fish to, you know, all the way to human and then a deity. So through that game, uh, you have karma, you have good deeds, bad deeds, which essentially, uh, uh, essentially impact the way your future holds in the game. So something that you guys should really check out. I was really excited about the walk of life. And finally, we have Gurjeet Singh. Gurjeet Singh is the youngest of the lot. And he's one of the artists that we helped um, last year. And he's one who's, you know, winning a lot of awards, uh, gaining a lot of attention. And um, uh, his works are all about the LGBT community. And uh, he, you know, you should look at it. All of it has one narrative about 
how uh, one of his friend who you know told him the story uh, he used to go in a bus and in the bus there used to be a bus conductor and uh, he fell in love with the bus conductor but he never had the guts to tell the bus conductor that he he uh, loved him he used to imagine himself bearing his child and uh, finally he gets a uh, you know he never tells him and then he goes to office and he gets a transfer letter and he has to leave the place without telling him how much he loved him so check it out it's uh, it's all uh, you know the works are there and i hope you guys enjoy it because uh, we've been so let's excited not, let's not forget farhad yes one uh, we we do have in fact farhad hussain as well and you will see a couple of sculptures one is right here and one inside and he is another person who is looking at contemporary life and contemporary society and seeing the ironies and the satire in in a sort of a uh, struggle that we have in everyday life so that's license to laugh and i think that we welcome everyone to just enjoy the show and no show of this caliber would be possible without support from our wonderful sponsors lifespan india's largest nutraceutical manufacturer was i'm sure you all happy to know a key supporter of today's show For those of you who are still wondering what nutraceutical means, with all my experience in life, let me enlighten you. <laughs> nutraceutical is a food stuff that provides health benefits in addition to its basic nutritional value. I'm hoping you all understood that. If not, I can't repeat it because that will waste time. So maybe look it up on Google. Lifespan has a wide range of products from multivitamins. to super organic superfoods and personal care come on grown ups after a crazy year of viruses and now vaccines is that all you can do mr narita's company is a home grown success story again please this time louder i'm also excited to introduce parvati desai a fashion designer who specializes in silk sari weaving Her collection is everything that a modern woman with a modern Indian woman with deep Indian roots would wish for. She is not only a designer but also a handloom revivalist. She works closely with hand with handloom weavers and with fabrics that are organic and designs inspired from nature. So please give Mrs. Parvati Desai a huge round of applause for having supported this exhibition and the art. I don't believe we need a license to laugh. I often hear grown-ups talk about how crazy 2020 was. Can you imagine? I spent that whole year last year on on Zoom and Google Meet. That's 10% of my lifetime and 25% of my school going this so far. 